Chapter 4 India from 600 BC to 400 BC B. Life of the people Importance of taxes All the producers of goods paid a tax to the king. The peasants gave a share of their produce to the king, which was ordinarily one-sixth of their produce. The metal workers made implements free for the king, the carpenters made chariots free for the king, and the cloth weavers gave a certain amount of cloth free to the king in the beginning taxes were collected in kind, that is, in the form of goods produced by the people, and they were distributed as salary to the officers. Taxes were very important because without them the king could not do anything, he could not keep an army, he could not have any officers to work for him, and he could not even build roads. So he appointed a group of officers as tax collectors. It was the job of some of these officers to go to every village, measure the fields of each peasant and to make a record of the amount of grain which the peasant produced. One-sixth of this was calculated and the peasant had to pay that amount to the king. When the harvest was ready, the tax collector came to the peasant and collected the amount due to the king. The same method was used with all the other professions. In the towns too, the tax collector collected the tax in goods or in money. The village, most of the people still lived in villages, and these had not changed much from the earlier period. There were more villages now as the population was increasing. The villages were connected with one another by roads and pathways, or by boats along the rivers. Each village had a headman who worked for the people of the village and for the king and was therefore a link between the king and the peasants. The king owned some villages and lands. Laborers were employed to cultivate these lands and paid wages for their work. The town. There was one big difference between earlier times and this period, and that was the growth of towns. In the earlier period there had been a few small towns. But now many more towns and cities came into existence. Some of them are often mentioned in the literary sources and were important. These were Ujjaini in Malwa, Pratishthana in the northern Deccan, Rigukatsha, Broch in Gujarat, Tamralikti in the Ganga Delta, Shravasti in Uttar Pradesh, Champa in Bihar, Rajagrai in Bihar, Ayodhya in Uttar Pradesh, Koshambi near Allahabad in Uttar Pradesh. Some of these towns have been excavated. It was found that they were built of wood and bricks and therefore were more permanent than the villages. The king's palace was usually built of stone and wood and was finely decorated. Towns often grew up around craft centers, trading centers and the capital of kingdoms. The craft centers were originally villages which had specialized in certain crafts, such as metal work or carpentry or cloth making. When craftsmen or artisans living in a neighboring area collected together, a town grew up. We chose to work together in one place, because it was easier to secure the raw materials and to sell the finished articles. This work was usually organized by another group of persons, the merchants. The merchants went from village to village to collect, for example, cotton thread from the spinners or cotton cloth from the weavers and to sell them in villages where they were in demand. So the spinners and weavers were saved from the trouble of going and selling articles outside their own village. The merchants earned a profit through supplying the goods acquired. What was true of thread and cloth also applied to grain and other products. Soon there was a large trade or exchange of goods in the country. Trade. Trade was made easier by the invention of a new method of exchange and value, money. Before coins were used, goods were bartered or exchanged, e.g., 10 bales of cloth for one cow or two sacks of wheat for five jars of oil. It was not easy to buy and sell through barter. But coins are easy to carry. As the use of coins increased there were more traders. The coins of this period were crude pieces of silver and copper with a design punched on them. Trade was not limited to a small area. Goods produced in the Ganga Valley were sent across the Punjab to Takshashila, Taxila, or else across the Vindhya Mountains to the port of Bhrigukatsha, Broch, from where ships took them to Western Asia or to South India society. The artisans and merchants organized themselves into groups known as Shrenis or Gills. Because the artisans lived and worked together, they became so close that they were regarded as a caste jati. The sons followed the same profession as the father so that the caste became hereditary. Gradually separate laws were made for each of these castes. 
These laws were recorded by the Brahmans. Many of them were very strict laws. People of one caste could not eat with those of another caste, nor could they marry outside their caste. The castes were grouped under four classes Brahman, Kshatriya, Vashya and Shadra. Outside the four classes were the lowly castes, which were looked down upon. The lawmakers laid down rules for the guidance of the life of the higher classes. According to these rules life was divided into four stages or ashramas. The first stage, that of Brahmacharan, was devoted to education, the second, Grihastha, to being a householder and raising a family, the third, Vanaprastha, to living in the forests for meditation, and the last stage, Sanyasin, to become an ascetic and a preacher. This was the ideal, but one does not know how many people followed it.